Welcome to Love and Light Ministries International under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Mark S. Herod and Co-Pastor Rev. Kathy Ann Herod. We are located in the beautiful island of Barbados. Join us Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. for our services. Remember to like, share, and follow our Facebook page every day as we share daily truths from the Word of God with our Bishop, Dr. Mark S. Herod. We look forward to seeing you come and experience the power of God as Love and Light Ministries proclaiming the love of Christ, the power, and the light of the Word. God bless you. As we apply the blood, oh God. 
International. This is Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen.
King, let our King, let our King, King Jesus be lifted up. Oh, stand. You are Alpha, you're Omega, you're the beginning, you're the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you all, we give you all, we give you all the glory. You are Alpha. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. You are Alpha. You Be a soul to 
church there's another time to look around let's give God the praise come on he deserves the praise it has to be bigger than a song hallelujah father we bless your name you are worthy 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 of it all for look what you have done through your son the Bible says that on the third day when the devil and his cohorts were looking thinking that it was the end Folks, it was the beginning of something great. Somebody thank God for your salvation this morning. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Lord, you deserve the lifting of hands. Come on. For from you, Lord, for from you are all things this morning. Lord, you deserve the glory. Come on, let your hands break for at least one of them. And say, for from you, for from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. If he's been good to you, shout a hallelujah. Don't let nobody steal your praise. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad today that the Lord is my shepherd. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23. Team. We heard last Sunday that dinner is prepared as it was. It served. But the foundation to all of that 
ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that God so loved the world. Look over to somebody and say, I, I'm part of the world. Tell somebody, and I want you to know that I'm thankful that God so loved me. Look over to somebody and said, I, I don't feel special because of how I'm dressed. I feel special because of what God has done through his son. Now somebody give God a praise. Somebody press in and let daddy know that you love him. Let daddy know that you appreciate him. Oh, let daddy know that God, we thank you for your goodness. The Lord is my shepherd. Thank you for Jesus. Resurrection Sunday, folks. He goes before me. <laughs> hey, we've got the victory, saints. Defender behind me. All because of the cross and the resurrection. Hey. I won't fail. <laughs> Woo. How many of you know? I'm filled with anointing. What we're doing here this morning is bragging on the devil. What he meant for bad, God turned around for good. Yes, believe it, believer. No weapon can. No weapon can harm me. Oh. Mm. I won't fail. Give him the praise, my love. You love him. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I am not. He's a person of God. Come on, let's show up from the devil. Let the devil tell him that we know the God we serve. Come on. He's my comfort. Always holds me close. I'm so glad. Hey, he always guides me. <laughs> Even when we can't trace him, we can trust him. Through mountains and valleys. Has that been your testimony, saints? But lift your hands and say, his joy is refreshing. Right there in the midst of your valley, we can experience that. Restores my soul. Come on, choir. Come on, worship team. Tell them, say. Mercy and goodness. Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody, bright. It gives me a shoulder. His glory, hallelujah, yeah, face to face. Oh, come on, somebody, let's give him the praise. Everybody, won't you sing it now? Come on, say, he's my comfort, always holds me close. Speak to the Lord right now. Your spirit within me. That's a miracle, you know. That is a miracle, saints. Jesus said, he's going away. But he's going to send the comforter, the teacher. Lives with me, yeah, yeah. Oh, I will walk, walk in your, your come on. Your spirit lives within me. Yeah. My bed, hey. My bed. Sing. Your, your spirit lives, lives within, within me. me. So, so I will walk in your peace. It's guaranteed. Your spirit lives within me. It's guaranteed, yeah. My bed, I've got it. My bed, Cause your, your spirit lives, lives within me. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. My faith. Hey, my faith. faith. One more time. Your, Your spirit, spirit lives within me. It means we're walking so in victory. Walk in 
your spirit. Let's release that in the atmosphere. Sing it like you know it. Sing it like you mean it. Hey, yeah, say your spirit. So I, Daddy, we are guaranteed. Come on. And I know I've got my victory. I'm walking in it. I'm walking it. I'm talking it. I'm living it. I believe it. Come on, yeah. Hey, I can see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? Somebody, you're coming out. You're coming out. I said you're coming out. You're coming out. Hey, I can see it. Can you feel it? Do you know it? Yeah. My My We are guaranteed, saints. Victory, clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, if, if you love him this morning, give him a wave offering. Tell God how much you love him. I'll leave it to you. 60 seconds, tell him. God, I love you. You've been faithful. God, I love you. You're awesome. God, I love you. You're so wonderful. God, I love you because you're the king of kings. And God, I love you because you're the rose of Sharon, uh, the fairest. Of God, I love you. Come on, I love you. Give me a little more keyboard in the monitor. Just a little bit. Not just a little bit, little bit. That's a little, too much, a big little bit. Hallelujah. Say, lift your hands. Say, Father, I love you. You know, as I shared last, uh, on Good Friday, Daddy gave us his very best. And as we were saying on Friday, we've got to be grateful. And the way that we are grateful are through a number of things. One, walking in obedience. God got that settled first. But the most powerful thing that we can do to show God our appreciation for what he has done is to be worshipers. Is to be people who are prepared to worship God in spirit and in truth. And in spirit and in truth means that even in the midst of not being able to trace God, it is the truth of God's word that keeps us. So when we can't trace him, we trust him. So like you saying, no weapon formed against me. We speak that. We speak life. When, when the enemy is seeking to come against us, we are able to stand and declare, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Even in the midst of the bad news, even in the midst of the pain, even in the midst of the sorrow. Why? Because our God is a deliverer. Give me the keyboards. Jesus. Father, I love. Come and love him up. My heart is filled with desire to see your power and glory. Cover the earth as the water clothes the sea. Declare it. I am surrounded. You see, through the resurrection, we've got the victory. Come on. Totally surrendered to you. I lift up my hand, standing on a shame. I worship you, Father. Exalt in your name. You captured my heart. Now my life has changed. I lift up my hand. Oh, oh yeah. I lift up my hand. Lift up and up some more. Come on. Father, we love you. Thank you for what you've done through your son. Come on, sing it again. Come on. Father. I love you, Lord, my heart is filled with desire. You know that, God. Yes, your power and your glory. We want to see it, God. Cover the earth as the waters clothe the sea. We declare, I am so. You see, because we got to work. we got to fight. But we've got the majority on our side. Hey, hey! Totally surrendered to you. 
I lift up my hand, standing on a shame. I worship you, Father, exalting your name. You captured my heart, now my life has changed. I lift up my hand. Lift up my hand. Hallelujah. 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 Spend some time. Hallelujah. 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 Don't wait for the next song. Come on. Just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Father, we bless you. 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 Father, you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. We have sung the songs, God. But God, we touch you this morning. We are thankful, God, you have given us breath and life and hearing and eyes and feet and hands to move. Father, we move in you and we lift you up for God. You deserve the glory. God, you deserve the praise. God, you deserve the honor. You deserve the minutes to bow before you, God. You deserve that time where we can open our mouths and show appreciation for your goodness oh god you have kept us hey god you have delivered us god you have set us free you are worthy of all the praise this morning god you are worthy to be exalted god you're worthy for us to lift our hands and open our mouths and shout hallelujah oh we can shout jesus we can shout glory to god You deserve the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. So I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. So I lift my hands in worship. As I praise your holy name, for you are great, Lord. You deserve miracles, so great. How many of you can testify? There, there is no one else like you. Come on, folks, tell him about themselves. Come on. There is no one else like you. Lord, you are great. Tell him that one more time from our hearts. You deserve the glory and the honor. So I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory, my God, and the honor, my Lord. So I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name because God you are great. I've lived it. You've done great miracles God. I've lived it. Yeah. God I've experienced it. I've experienced it. God you're the only one. Hey. Oh I declare it there. Yeah. You are great. I've lived it God. I've experienced your greatness God. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. Oh, shut it. Oh, like you. For you are great. You do miracles every day so great. Yeah. There is no one else like you. There is no one. within my heart. Aren't you glad this morning that he lives within your heart? Aren't you excited this morning that he's a friend, he's a confidant? Even when you're alone, you are not lonely because he is always there. He's, he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's almighty. He's all powerful. 
give God some more praise this morning. He got up on the third day and he rolled that stone away. And this morning we are redeemed. We are free. We are free. He imparted that salvation into our hearts this morning. And we are so grateful this morning. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It's a pleasure to be here this morning. After your beautiful worship. And I look all through the congregation. And you look so lovely from where I stand. We want to welcome you this morning. It's good to have you here. For those, um, could you all be seated, please? For those persons who are visiting with us for the first time, could you let stand and let us give you some love and light love in the house this morning? Any visitors with us for the first time? Yes, we have some visitors. And for those on Facebook who is visiting with us for the first time, we are so delighted to have you visit with us. You can take that opportunity any Sunday morning and come and worship with us. We are usually at St. George Secondary School at 8.30 on Sunday mornings. But we are delighted to have you going with us from there and from far this morning. Give God some more praise this morning in the house. We welcome you and we know that you've been blessed so far. And we look forward to greater blessings for the remainder of this service. Amen. 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 It's celebration time. We are still in celebration. We know that Christ was born and he rose again. And we know that we have eternal life. And for those who are celebrating a birthday or anniversary this morning, you can celebrate. Anyone celebrating a birthday, anniversary in the house this morning? Could you stand please so that we can serenade you? You're celebrating on Saturday. Okay, we will serenade you this morning. you to celebrate each day of that month that is you're celebrating your birthday amen? amen give god thanks every day and do something special yes. our announcements for this morning sunday the 31st of march 2024 we are already three months in the year committed to christ's fulfilling purpose in 2024 and beyond this Wednesday, April the 3rd, we continue our prayer and Bible study sessions at 7.30 p.m. Presented by our Bishop Mark S. Hayward. Our study, which is based on 1 Peter 3, our study is now based on 1 Peter 3. We've gone to 1 Peter 3 already. We encourage you to come out as we experience and encounter the power and presence of the Holy Spirit as we look at holy living. The sessions are powerful and impactful. Our radio program, tune in to the True for Living program on Life 97.5 on Thursdays at 10 a.m. You'll be encouraged and enlightened through the power of God's word from our dear bishop, Mark S. Hayward. An announcement for the Men of Purpose Ministry. The Men of Purpose Ministry would like to thank the men who attended the session last Sunday evening with Mr. Fabian Sargent. The session was a very informative one. A thank you note. Our bishop would like to say a thank you to all persons who attended and gave their support to him 
as he ministered and, worship, and the worship team who led worship at the sessions at Apostolic Prophetic Conference and anniversary celebrations at Tower of Power's ministry last Thursday evening. We had an awesome time in God's presence. Thank you for those who were there. The Corporate Events Committee. The Corporate Events Committee of LA LMI welcomes you to our family evening at 5.30 p.m. today. The session will be held in the sanctuary at St. George Secondary School Hall. Come and enjoy some great activities such as karaoke, domino competition in honor of Philip Louis, line dancing, cornhole, and so much more. Lots of food will be on sale, but the fellowship and fun will be free. Bring your whole family and come out. The committee is also encouraging people to bring their favorite games, board games, etc. Looking forward to seeing you there. For those persons who have registered for the Domino's competition, please note that it will commence at 7 p.m. The competitors are asked to be in place by 6.45 p.m. On to our anniversary service. Next Sunday, 22 years. Amen? 22 years and counting. God has been good. Amen? Amen. We've been blessed for those 22 years. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed worshiping here for 22 years? I certainly have been blessed because I was here from day one and I never looked back. So I know you would have been blessed too. Amen. It will be held at the St. George Secondary School Hall next Sunday, the 7th of April at 8.30 a.m. Dr. Selwyn Braffitt, the presiding bishop of Pavi and senior pastor of Kingdom Life Assembly, H. Marlowe Christ Church, will be our featured speaker. Invite your family and friends to this special celebration service. You will also be blessed with ministry from our choir and others. Come out, come out and be blessed. Our prayer corner, continue to pray for one another. Pray for God's peace over them. Pray, remember to pray for those who are sick among us. Pray for our seniors whom we don't see at church. And remember that we are our brother's keeper. Pray for our children and our nation, Barbados. And this is a gentle reminder. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, suggestions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them in the box at the front. That's the ring box there the, to my left. And your names are optional. Thank you so much for your patience and, your patience and attention to the foregoing notice. It's giving back to God time. Are you excited? He gave so much for us. So we're going to give back to him before our friends and our toys, our benevolent fun. Amen. Let us stand at this time. Hallelujah. As we pray for the, this morning's offering. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We just love you, Lord God. And at this time, Lord, we come there, God, to Give back a portion of what you have given to us, Lord. Father, I pray that every hand this morning will be blessed, Lord God. Father, I pray, dear God, that provision will be available for every giver, Lord. And for those who don't have to give, Lord, Lord, as they wait in expectancy, Lord, we know that you are no debtor of persons. We know that we can trust you. We can depend on you and we can believe in you, Lord. Father, this morning, I ask you to provide for them, for those who cannot give, Lord God. Bless this service right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And may these offerings be spent to your glory and your honor and the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. After the offering is taken, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Kathy Ann Harewood, who will come and lead us into the communion. Do have a wonderful day.
Come on. Oh, he's a very big God. He's a miracle worker. Oh, yeah. He does all those mighty things. Amen. That's the God we serve. He's the best formula. He's a very big God. Come on, when we do this song, we have to get the real moves and the dance. Come on. I haven't been able to put it down yet because there's so many different moves. But I'm going to learn piece by piece so that we can dance and sing and give glory to the Lord. Amen. Good to see all of you in the house of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for yourselves. For the big God that we serve. For the awesome wonder that he is. He is truly our God. He's truly our creator. This morning, before we go into our communion table, we want to do that song a few times. It says, hallelujah, you've won the victory. Hallelujah, you've done it all for me. Amen. Jesus. praise this morning. Give him a wave offering. Give him a wave offering. Give him a praise. Give him a thank you. Give him a hallelujah. He has done it all for us. That's why we can come in his house this morning and take part in the blood and his body that was shed for us on the cross. Father, this morning as we gather around your table, 
to sup with you. I pray, God, that you will bless this holy communion that we hold in our hands, which represents your body that was bruised, the shedding of your blood for the remission of sins this morning. We are grateful for this opportunity another time because the word of God says as often as you eat and drink, come on, you're doing it unto him. We be renewed in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. So I declare that all of us that will take part this morning, God, that we will be ready, oh God, as we sup before you, that nothing is in our way to stop us, God, from taking part of this cup this morning. I declare, God, as we would use it, God, we would be reminded of all that you have done. But God, if you're not going to stop at the cross, but we are gone forward. We are here this morning celebrating your resurrection. We are celebrating, oh God, you of all that you have done, Lord, all those years ago up to now. And we can truly give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for all that you will continue to do in our lives as we would stand here this morning to represent you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Have your way, God, in no other name but the precious name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. All of you who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized, whether you're a member of our church here or not, you're free to partake with us at this time. As we hold the bread in our hands. It says, in the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken on behalf of you. Let's partake of the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the same way, he took of the cup also, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, you do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is risen. He is alive. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He's won the victory. He is alive. Our God is risen. He is alive. He's won the victory. He reigns. Everybody, let's stand in God's presence this morning. Let's stand. If you can stand, just stand with me as we declare this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. We are respected the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for all that he has done in our lives. Come on. He has done the best thing. He's given us the best gift. So Lord, we are thankful this morning that we can stand in your presence, God, to represent all that you have done because you know, God, because of you in our lives, oh God, that's what makes a difference, oh God, because of you in our lives, oh God, we can stand in victory, God, we can stand in victory and declare because you have been risen from the dead, God, we can declare that we have power from on high to you, God. Oh, come on, give him the praise, give him the praise one more time. Our God is risen, oh, he is alive. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. At this time, our bishop, Dr. Mark S. Harewood, will come as he delivers the sermon this morning. May God bless you. May God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 He's risen. Let us pray. Father, this morning we are indeed thankful for all that you've done and continue to do in our lives. On this very special day that we celebrate and the resurrection of Jesus and the fact that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding for us. This morning, God, we truly thank you. And as we would break your word together today, I pray that it would minister like only you would allow it to minister. Your hearts and lives be open to your word today. We ask these things in order the name of the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen.
Maybe touch one or two people. You don't have to go too far next to you and tell them, you know, happy Easter. Love them up. Show some love and like love. You've got about 60 seconds, so you've got to move fast. Don't walk the F here, you know. That's right. We normally would do our congregation to greet him, but I didn't say everybody, two or three. Count properly, please. Blessings. To all of you who are visiting, thank you very much for being a part of our service this morning. You see some of the representatives from wife. Is it still wife? Yeah, who are here. Because uh, I know a lot of things were said to you about changing stuff and so on. But wife is still here to stay and we thank you for, you know, you were with us for your launch and to see her, you're back with us this morning. God bless you. All right. I want to share from you, I, 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 I venture to say it briefly. I'm learning, I'm getting better. Uh, and the title of my little discourse is Our Only Hope is Christ. How many of you this morning are glad that your only hope is Christ? Because how many of you have hoped in others and they let you down? Let it be a parent, a friend, whatever. But this familiar passage, I think as believers we know about it, forgetting those things behind and pressing towards the mark. Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 to 12. And we find in this passage that the one thing in life that Paul sought was the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ. Now, how many of you know as believers that we are the righteousness of Jesus? I ask again, how many believers understand that we are the righteousness of Jesus Christ? But here's the thing. It has nothing to do with what we have done. It is all about what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. Give him a love. Give him a praise. Paul knew that no matter how great or how good he became, he could never be perfect. And therefore, his only hope of living forever was focusing his heart. I want you to hear me carefully. His only hope of living forever, same hope that we should have as believers, was focusing his heart upon Jesus Christ and trusting the righteousness and perfection of Jesus to cover him. I dare say, believers, that we too, as believers, must grasp that our only hope of living forever rests in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we don't seem to operate as if that is the reality. But Paul lived for Christ. And he trusted God to honor his commitment. His only hope was Jesus Christ. Believers, as we look around and see what is happening, the Bible coming through before our very eyes and all these things, the challenges we face and all these things. I say with Paul that our only hope is Jesus. So this is what the passage is all about. Paul lived his glor this glorious fact. If he trusted Jesus Christ, if he sought after the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ, with all that he was and all that he had, God would take his faith and count it as righteousness. I want to say that again with us involved. We must believe that if we trust in Jesus, if we seek after the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ, with all that we are and all that we have, God will take our faith, believers, and count it as righteousness. Did you hear the prerequisite? If we Seek after the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ. Do you hear the first part? We have to do the seeking. Believers, we have to do the pursuing. Tell somebody, it takes effort. It takes consistency. It takes focus. It takes purpose. Driven living. Because the promise is, 
that once we pursue the righteousness of Jesus Christ, our only hope, God will take our faith and count it as righteousness. I want us to note five significant points here about this whole story, this whole passage from Paul and his example. And I pray as I speak about Paul, it will help you to see where you have to be too. Paul had a past, had a past experience with Christ. And I know you all know he was this bright light stop and he came into the thing. But before that, he was about destroying Christians. How many of us, before we came to Christ, we had all kinds of things to say about church? Anybody? I could take the word and twist it because I knew a lot of words because we were Christian for nine years old and laugh at the fact, oh, you really believe it was really an apple for truth and you, you believe that this was the next thing and all the things. We, we know to tangle up, especially Christians who know the word to come to back. But Paul had a past experience, hear the word, with who? Christ. There was a time when he had counted his own righteousness as lost. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. We are going through our verses. He says, I once thought these things were valuable. But now I consider them worthless. Why? Anybody can see why you see the verse? Huh? Keep the verse up. What happened after worthless? Because? Because of what? Because of what? Paul was referring to his conversion experience. There was a time when he had given his own self righteousness and works. You know about it, killing the Christians, running them down, hunting them down. And it's, he was going about trying to do what? To become perfect in his own strength. The second thing that we observe is that Paul had a continuous experience with Christ. Paul had a continuous experience experience with Christ. He constantly, you, I want you all to hear these adjectives, are there? He had a continuous we all got uh, the day, not tomorrow, maybe not next week, when everything's going good, when things going bad, we're gone. He constantly, folks, if you're going to serve God, if you're going to pursue the righteousness of Jesus Christ, it is where Force is going to call for some hurt. It's going to call for some balancing, some stuff, your children, your wife, your work. But God must still continue to be numero uno, uno, one. He constantly, constantly, it means that, and as we hear about Paul, he was wrestling with certain stuff like we do. He wanted to do certain things that he didn't do them. And what you're supposed to do, he wouldn't do it. You know, all naughty verses. But he count all things as loss, as waste, in order to win Christ. Believers, unfortunately, and the reality is, is that in churches, in God's universal church, this is not the case. Because we have sought as believers to modify. Oh, the Bible does say that. God said, look after your family first. God didn't tell me to left my family and worry about the church. You see, because people see a church as this. We see the church as just a building and we come together, our respective locations, and that's church. no. God's universal church, Pakistan, Africa, thing on the trees all around. So we think we're serving a local, a local assembly. So we come church according to that. No, we are serving Almighty God wherever we are. Whether we are here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or wherever we are. So Paul counted all things, all, not some, all, as lost and as waste in order to win Christ. When we talk about winning Christ, we're not trying to win our salvation. We have it. But we are saying that God, if I appreciate, God, if I really, really understand what you've just done in my life by redeeming me, it means, God, I've got to start to walk in obedience. I've got to start to walk into some places where there's darkness, I must bring light. <laughs> yeah, where there's somebody that needs some wisdom, I've got to be standing right there in my job. Right when somebody looking and they're running and they're fearful, they've got a headache, they can find me. Why? Because of the Jesus Christ that is inside of me that is being manifested. <laughs> Philippians 3, here's what he says. We're going through the Bible. He says, yes, everything else. Everything else relative to, uh, in relation to pursuing Christ is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ. Yes, my Lord. As, as for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage 
so that I could gain Christ. How many of you this morning can say you have discarded everything else? You know that many times we put ourselves as more important than, than the Lord? But I'll leave that one there. When a person has made the decision to seek after Jesus, he is to, I deliberately take my time, isn't it? He is to continue. Watch your word again. Because what happens, a lot of us give our lives to Christ. And we continue a little bit. We continue according to our, men, our modifications. But he is to continue to seek after the knowledge of Jesus. To learn all he can about the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ. The third thing about Paul. Paul sought a future experience with Christ. In other words, he sought to be found in Christ. Here are Philippians 3 9. And before one and become one with him, I am no I, I am I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. You know, don't do this, do that, don't do that. Watch this. I beca become righteousness. Hear these words again as I be belabor them through faith in Christ. And I like the icing on the cake. The full stop could have stopped there. It says, For God's way of making us right with Himself depends on faith. Y'all saw that? I can let the word speak. I actually just say nothing. We're not going to read that. I ain't said just say nothing. Attempted, not me. Holy Spirit minister like only you can. You see, what, 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 what is happening here is that Paul was looking ahead either to death or to the return of Jesus Christ. Folks, you see that there? I believe that this is something that we need to write out and put it on our fridge, in our cars, in our phones. You know, when I got the fancy phone things with the, with the um, screen savers or protect, you know, savers, these protect the thing, the savers is where it could come up. You know what we need to do that? Because, folks, you might not die physical death, but Christ might burst the sky. So we must, like Paul, be walking that, listen, as healthy as you are right now. We have a friend recently, nothing wrong for her, get up, go and do her job at work. Book it down. Just sick, vomiting. She didn't even, she didn't even know she, just vomiting and she's dead. But we feel because we get up in the morning and everything is fine, let us go on our way. Lord, hold on there, because, you know, anytime heaven come about, I ready here, so tack you on there, but hold on again, so. We have a lot to say, we have a lot of opinions. We come together, we express a lot of opinions, a lot of it, wrap up in some gospel, but a lot, a lot of deception, because we must understand it is a continuous pursuit, right? So Paul was already saying, listen, or I, I, I could die. Or he lived in that reality that he could die or Christ could burst his skies tomorrow. You all see how things are happening in the world in a second like that? At any given day, 20, 30,000 people could be dead someplace. Quickly like that. I look at the waters coming in here from the sea and I say to myself, you, you, could, be, you could be on the coast there by, by, I don't want to get by the free ads, but you know the fast food places down there and by down this side. And you could be enjoying a nice meal and look across the road and see the waves must be higher than, than any pole in Barbados. Most people will probably die by a heart attack. But if you are living in the reality that any given minute we go about our business every day, like every day we are going to be going about our business, we put off things that we think, well, I'll do that tomorrow because I figure, well, you know, God understands. Put that somewhere. Like Paul, start looking ahead, either to death, most of us don't look ahead of that at all, do we? Or to the return of Jesus Christ. You see, when he came face to face to God, Paul wanted to stand before God. Then he came in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, not in his own righteousness. The other thing, four point quickly. Paul sought a victorious Christian experience with Christ. He sought to know Christ. 
to know his glorious power over the world and all that is in the world. Folks, you don't believe that we need to know God's glorious power over the world and all that is in the world with the world in chaos? And if we go by what we see in the world, if we go by how we feel and see, we will go berserk. We have got to know how God sees it and understand that God's have, God have authority over it. And if we stand up to our tree together and speak to anything, it can happen. If we continue to travail in our prayer meetings and all these things, don't see it, but I can pray from home. We come together. Why? Because there's power in numbers. Watch this. The Bible says that one will put how much? I have my petitions in here too. We'll put how much? Was the exponential there? If you're going to treat people, you're going to see, huh? You got a million in a hurry. Because it's by power, not by times. One put a thousand. Two put 10,000 worth in mass. So a tree will put what? A hundred thousand. Four, a million. We somehow want to modify. I don't have to go. I don't go to do this. No, you got to. Paul understood this force. We've got to press in. And even if you ain't going to the thing, if you are not going to your prayer meeting or wherever, you should still be home praying on that day. Not watching TV. Forgive me. No. You can't. You can't. Your church got prayer meeting. And, and you, you, you are rest right eating food. You are your table washing dears of all like, Sorry, that don't show anymore. <laughs> Folks, you understand what I'm saying? And, and they got a problem with it. How could we talk like Paul and talk, but we want to experience Christ? No, I can't make it. I'm tired. But Father, even before I go sit here, I pray even now at my church, call your church name. Pastor, whoever sharing, I pray God your word be powerful. God, I drop it. I drop it to sleep. But God, I pray even now I join with my people at church and I declare God that whatever they're praying about, I agree on. I can see you later. Go on, see. <laughs> Not pray later and then go and watch a movie. I know, I know my soul preaching. But, uh, saw, but I'm saying to us, this is what we got to do. And listen, Paul had to give up a lot. You know, go and read about him. I'm going to go through that. You go and read about Paul. I got everything big, boy, rich. And a lot of times, we let the materialism take our thing. Oh, I can sip a wine. I can, oh, Lord, look at my car. Yeah, I'm going to wash it, though. Yeah. Go and wash my car, boy. If I don't wash my car, I'm going to look good. Yeah, I got a big Mercedes. And they go, you know, no, you don't got a Mercedes, so you know it, Sarge, so you know I'm talking about you, right? But understand what I'm saying. Paul's pursuit in life was to know Christ. Why? Why? Tell me why, church. Why is this pursuit? Or why should our people be pursuing? Because look, the money, the car, the love life, all the things we're doing, all the fancy things, it can't do nothing for me. Our only hope is in Jesus Christ. First, what can happen tomorrow if something unfortunately happened to you, you can curse God and die. But you can't wait till you get there to start pursuing Christ. Oh, oh Lord, Father, I wish this foot didn't go on. God, this one foot thing. Lord, we'll do this before. You want to be ready so that if something does happen, you can say, God, I don't care how one is. I am going to use the one. God, to try my best to give you praise. That can only come out of preparation. That can only come of a continuous, constantly following hard after Jesus Christ. Paul said this in verse 10. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Huh. Anybody ever pray that? Because if you pray that, you better be, you better be ready for work. <laughs> People be taught, they say, sound pretty oh, oh yeah, man. I want to experience the mighty power. You know what we do? I want, I want, I want the gift of healing to do it. Huh? So you're like a star in the kingdom. I want the gift of prophecy to what it tells about who to marry or don't marry. We don't understand it. Doesn't understand God do on prophets. You check all the prophecy. God be connected to Jesus. Not whether you married is who tell where you live in John Street. I see a, a, a blind coming through in this red. Um, it's a blind you got from your neighbor. That's the sort of things we're looking for. In a time like this, where we need the power of God to operate. Where we need to see people walk in the church with demons or we at church and see people in trouble at work or wherever and we can walk in and say, okay, don't be afraid. You don't be afraid. She palpitated, don't worry. I know someone. The ambulance coming, I know someone. Give me a chance with the first. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And see it happen. But the problem with us is that we don't think we have that capacity. Paul recognized that from early. He said, look, I want to suffer with him. Here's the problem. Believers, they want to suffer. 
That is why believers can go to church. God wants to bless you. There's no sin. Once you have the Lord and you have grace, you are fine. God loves you. God wants to bless you. A lot more motivational speakers. You hear it, see? Paul says, I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. People want to share in his resurrection. Oh, they want dead. Sorry, they don't want to die. But they're not prepared to share in his death. Listen, understand, you have to die every single day when you're walking with Jesus. Jesus himself said that you've got to deny yourself. You better take up the cross. Why? Because he understands that as long as you, like Paul, are pressing in to what he has called you to, and you seek to suffer with him, sharing in his death, understand that you will suffer persecution. People don't appreciate that no more because it's not good. People get run because frown for demons. You see, Paul. His great pursuit in life was to know Christ, his only hope. Here's what he was looking to know, to know the power of Christ's resurrection, the power to conquer all trials and temptations of life, even the most powerful thing that comes against us as human beings, death. Paul's great pursuit was to know the fellowship of Jesus' suffering. Most of us are willing to share in the blessings of Christ, but we want nothing to do with the suffering. He was seeking after. He wanted uh, to know, to be made conformable to Christ's death. You see, Christ subjected his flesh and desires to do exactly what God will. And so Paul, in turn, sought to subject himself totally to God, to put his flesh and desires to death, and to do the only will and desire of God. Folks, what I'm talking about here, and I'll go through it in some explanation, Charlie, is about purpose. You're not here for yourself. You're not here to be comfortable. If you get some comfort, give God the praise. If you get some fire, give God the praise. It's a reality, folks. And you know what? We're in the last of the last years. It ain't as easy as before. Things happening rapidly, and we've got to prepare ourselves. We can't, we've got no time to waste. We don't have the time to waste. Finally, Paul, in this fifth point, Paul sought an eternal experience with Christ. He committed himself totally to the one great purpose to attain the resurrection of the dead. He was totally committed to that glorious day of redemption. What is this glorious day of redemption we are talking about here quickly? And I, go, I can move on to the main point. The glorious day of redemption takes priority over our meeting the Lord at death. Let me explain. The Bible says, paraphrasing here, let me follow the verses, that when we die, we go to be with the Lord, right? Correct? You all knew that? Nobody, nothing. However, the Bible explains it. That's what it says. I don't want to get into it. Into it. But here's why Paul was about the glorious day of redemption. Because you see, we can die. We got a hole. And that's on a uh, it's called a progress. What was that? Thing? I thought people were going to rest when the Lord come. That the certain church is called. The, um, right. Yeah, purgatory. No, I talked that. But we go to be with the Lord. But watch this. The glorious day of redemption that Paul was looking forward to was this. The resurrection will launch the events that bring about the glorious day of redemption. Where there will be folks, a new heaven and a new earth. When all evil and sin and the cursing and dishonor of God will be stopped. God will become who? All in all. At the redemption, watch this, the elements of our present bodies will be called forth by God. I don't care if you're dead in Japan or Italy. From all over the world, do you see the magnificentness of the Lord? And the elements shall be transformed into perfect and eternal bodies. Somebody give God a praise. That is how we're going to live. In expectancy of the new body, of the new earth. No more sin. No more tears. No more nationality. Oh, God, man, somebody give God a praise. 
But that's the problem we ain't excited because you see, we're more accustomed to now. Oh, it's 40. I still got more life to live. Oh, Lord, that house, no, I had three rooms. I need two more. Oh, Lord, the cupboard's changed. I want a nice music room. And God says, you're doing all of that. What about I call you home tonight? Are you going to say, Lord, look at my checkbook? Grant me, let me get in. Give me the checkbook. God, look at the house. I did a lot for my family. I leave a legacy for my children. Believers in Christ, we have to pursue the righteousness of Christ. Because he's our only hope. And I want to share with you how you do that this morning. You see, to pursue anything requires work. How many of you all know that? Anybody? Anybody in here got a degree? Maybe two? I'm sure you can stand up and testify. Was it easy? If you didn't get those assignments correct, get that work right, you could not be here saying no pathway. Honors too? Tell people honors does be. I mean, some people got photographic memory, so that's a problem for them. But see me and, and I want to read that. Go and read enough before we get it. I got to work hard. Let people sleep in, they got to be reading. I got to be memorizing certain parts to make points. That's Mark Hayward. So, so what we're talking about here this morning, I don't know if you're prepared for it, but I can still tell you about it. It requires work. Folks, it requires commitment and it requires sacrifice. Understand that there's no such thing as a genuine believer sitting still. I want to say that. I want you to know there is no such thing as a genuine, hear the word, genuine believer sitting still after he has been saved. How many of you can testify that you know people sitting still up to now? 20, 30, 40 years in the church. Sir, say the serving God. Oh, I, I've been serving Lord for 30 years, 35 years now. I know what church is about. Yeah, church, not Christ. You see, the believer, the believer must never become, I've seen this for so many years, comfortable, complacent, lethargic, or lazy. The believer must not waste or lose opportunity. Waste time and lose opportunity. The believer begins um, to, to, to think he's safe and secure forever. He must not believe to think that he's safe and secure. Oh, you got grace, so. If the people mind, you remember we're on the grace pass. So, this is what you do. You know, the grace is true. But a believer must never begin to think that he's safe and secure forever. Therefore, he or she can sometimes do what he likes and give to his or her own desires. It don't work, so church. Pursuing the righteousness of Christ is all about purpose. Tell somebody it's all about purpose. You see, our only hope is in Christ. So if our only hope is in Christ, we've got to get into Christ. We've got to do what? We've got to say, listen, if God is my only hope, I've got to get to know him. I've got to get to walk in obedience with him. Hear, hear me. It is all about purpose. Paul counted the best the world could offer as rubbish compared to knowing Jesus. His life had become one of purpose. And to pursue means that we are committed to doing what God asks, not how we feel we should do it. Study his word, pray, give, flow in our ministry. We can't pick and choose what we will obey God with. You know, many people are driven by guilt and fear, anger and resentment, or wealth and materialism. In Philippians 3, Paul offers a much more worthwhile motivation. We call it committed to Christ, fulfilling purpose. Another writer calls it purpose-driven living. But here is Paul's description for the more worthwhile motivational thing. Verse 12 of our passage. It says this. I don't mean to say that I've already arrived or achieve these things, or that I've already reached perfection. But I press. Somebody say I press. Remember talk about work just now? I press to possess. I like that. I should have called this message that. I press to possess. How many of you press to possess? Or you possess to get depressed? I press to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed. <laughs> That's a sermon by itself. Somebody learned that from me. I possess, 
I press to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. That's a study. That's a study. Very good here. Anybody know when Jesus first possessed you? <laughs> Folks, don't worry to think about it. It is about fulfilling purpose. And I want you to note the following four things about purpose and I go on. The first thing that I want you to note is that knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. Many of us can stand up and tell you. We didn't always know it. When I was younger, you used to call me Johnny Salt, but I was rain fall, hang I work. And I had no scruples. I didn't, I didn't take one of God judging me, so I would know the rain falling. I'd get out the bus down the um, Fiesta Street bus stand. I was working at Gas Products Limited. I think most of the managers go away. They don't know that. But they wouldn't be doing that now. And I would deliberately walk through the rain. I didn't like to tell lies because I was a Christian for I tell you the nine, but back sitting. So I still had a little connection with the Lord, so I want to tell you, I deliberately walked through the rain. I didn't have to walk from Fiesta Street. Could have dodged somebody, different stand, go around the treasury building that country. I would walk and, 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 and get wet. Go up by the phone. I walked my 25 cent pieces. You know, I had phones hang up next to you, think? Boss, my nose country had a big shower. Hit me, my eyes so okay wet. I go, I go all back now to Brown's Gap. I'll be at work, working at 1 o'clock. I get this feeling. I'm tired of work, man. I go home. All of a sudden, I get to me eight. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Sir, it feels so good. Sorry, Mark. Here we go along. My good worker. So he's Mark along. You don't dodge all the time. And I go home and lay down, watch TV. I start first and get the little DVDs. You know, them little DVDs, them little small, them videotapes. And I go on and let them watch three movies. Till one day something took place, and this man was a Christian, you know, at our place, we went out, you know, um, my supervisor used to take us out to, you know, when the evening we drink and we buy drinks and things. And I, I keep getting to work late. I said, I didn't care. You see, when you come and take Jesus, it, it's a different thing. And he, he called me the office one. He said, Mark, you know, we, when we out drinking and things, we having our fun. You can't disrespect me. See that way I'm a sticker for respect for people doing the right things. You don't understand why because I lived it. So I learned from it. And some people don't learn. Do things that what me on my can't tell me what to do. And especially in church. But that's another sermon. But that so he said to me, right in the office, he said, Look, Mark, you know, you put me in a spot. Because I got no suspend you for at least three or four days, maybe a week. Because you're you're very tardy coming to work. He said, but don't ever put me in that position because I'm your supervisor in here. Maybe out laughing and skinny with teeth. And that man, wasn't a Christian on that hand? That man changed my whole life. So that was in 1982 or so. He would tell you from that day, his name is Mr. Rose. I don't even know if he's still alive. And from that day, Mr. something God used that man to speak into my spirit. And from that day, if you see me late, you go to call and know you go to flat, tell you. You go to know something wrong with me. From that day, my whole life changed. Why say that? Because if you are going to flow in your purpose, you got to be a person that consistent, that true to your word. So you see, knowing your purpose gives meaning to life. You see, without God, life has no purpose to start with. And without purpose, watch this, because we got the Jesus part. So we got Jesus, because watch this. Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, watch this though, life has no meaning. That is why people can be miserable and serving the Lord. Because you're too busy. That would be going to cause trouble in God's church. You're too busy doing the wrong thing. You ain't got no purpose. You wouldn't even get them and say, all right, I ain't doing nothing, but let me go and try hospitality. Let me tell you the fast, let me sing a song. Nothing. We can't just walk up and say, oh, oh, our only hope is in Christ. It should push us to be by Christ. The greatest tragedy for me, a man who didn't vote no purpose, and it had a lot to do with how he was brought up and how me and my father relationship was another thing. But the greatest tragedy is not death, but life before purpose. Did, did you hear what you just said? How about somebody be for church trying to You don't know what God, you ain't hear what God do yet. You, you don't, even if you're here, you, you don't try nothing yet. People think that church and, and I hear me talk these messages, but I go off preach. People think that church just attendance, just coming to church, go about home, live, home, you live, do, 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 come to church. Once I do that, pay my tithes and I good. 
Purpose, baby, purpose. Understand that we were made to have meaning. Paul writes, I press on to possess that perfection for which Jesus Christ first possessed me. Paul's life had been transformed because of the grace of Jesus that took to all of him. All of us talk about having the grace of Jesus. All of us talk about having forgiveness of sin. All of us talk about going to heaven. But let me ask you this morning, have you been transformed because of the grace that God has taken hold of you? That's the question. Yeah, I know God. I can talk about God. I, I can spoke verses. Man, I can minister to you. And because God wouldn't come in void, you can touch me when I get here because of the gift. But are you transformed with all this? Oh, yes. Our only hope. Secondly, knowing your purpose simplifies and focuses your life. Did you hear me? Paul writes, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. Right? Let me ask you something. Understanding the process that is involved to push you to achievement. If you don't start the process, what's going to happen? A degree course. If, if there's a process for you to operate through to get to the end. Pamela's done a master. Some people do my Leroy, everyone. I let him tell about the process. You know, I'm going to sleep this night. You know how many nights um, Leroy's wife had a hole in his half foot, had an air? How much responsibility she had to take up because Leroy in our room trying to break down our masters? Process. But if you don't begin the process, you can't get the success. Oh, Lord, how's on? Somebody calling that. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Same thing is with, with Jesus. Paul said, listen, I ain't got everything yet. I'm still working on it. But the question is, are you working on it? You see, before the clear person, the person has no foundation. On which to base, he said, that's what people can really, really do with the like, when they like, right? Because you, if, if you are about focus, then when you start to make certain decisions, how is this going to affect? I'm sure Leroy had to say, well, look, honey, if I go and do this thing full time, I'm not sure if he did that. I'm just using an example. Um, I got to do full time. So, honey, you know what you got to do? You can go and take a little box here, take care of the children, say, what can happen is um, we, can, we can sort out here. When I'm done, come along, darling. I can pull you along now. Step back, you go forward. See, if he didn't about purpose and they were about purpose, what would happen? He would get, look, take your children, clean your house. Hey, man, here. I got your degree. Your purpose helps you to make the right decisions. Are you all hearing me? I promise you, done now 15 minutes and they're done. done. See, when people don't have purpose, life becomes cluttered with choices made based on circumstances, pressures, and emotions. Not knowing our purpose leads to overwork, to stress, to fatigue, and tension. And I tell you all that. To this day, people can't understand how you just get all the things that I do and get them done well. I am bigging up the Lord now. It's because I understand that every gift that God given to me, I have responsibility for it. I have been pastoring simultaneously with working. I don't stand here to boast in my own strength. It has nothing to do with me. I just get tired too. I just get discouraged too. But it is the process. Tell somebody it's the process. doesn't mean I don't feel fatigued too. But every time the devil says, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, no, you want to trick me. Listen, I'll give you another example. I was in my class teaching a student because you want to show up God working. It's not about Mark Hayward. So we wake up and listen. We're going to be Lord. Listen to me. And for the time me and the girl come in, she come into class. Very nice girl, but she had this um, thing in her nose, nose ring. And I said, you know what I'm saying? Something wrong here, you know? Spray to God. I see you got to be working with God all the time. You see, Saint Paul. You got to be pressing it. I said, Sarah. Wrong. But every time we talk, even if it's asked her a question, she would start this. She get this attitude. But I persevered. I said, God, there's something deeper than this. Fast forward. I, this is since September. And the God you know, you can do this mess up. Last class, and tell me there it is. But last class, the class, we took a little five minute break and we were talking. This girl stood by her desk, and where I am, and I asked her some particular question. I said, but you know, you're, you're a nice girl. You know that God has created you for purpose? And what started coming to her eye? And to cut a long story short, she started to share her story about me. And her dad is a famous dad. I can tell you who he is or what he does, but he's a famous dad. And she was able to relate in front of all the kids in there. She was, it, was a, it was a therapeutic because what? I opened up. God, through me, opened up the door. And she shared some of those kids what kind of and when she started to share about how you got a famous parent all over the world, blah, 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 and don't notice you. She 
He said she would go on WhatsApps and, and so on. I said, but I could sense that you have adjusted to suit that. And so you, you're still kind of pleasant, but you could see that. You're so, and she went on, she gave us the whole story. I was able to tell that girl, despite that, there's a daddy called Jesus that loves you. She didn't jump up and give she love to you, Lord, but I know he planted the seed. You understand what I'm saying? Folks, we can't just want to look pretty interior. We got we to see ourselves ministering every single place we go. But that takes us doing what? Understanding our purpose. And all of us, one, one purpose that is to everybody, evangelism. We think it's special. Yeah, some people got a special gift into where they get into it. But you go, apart, go into all the what? Word. And start first in your home. And bug the people at home till they come to church. Let me go to the other two purposes and be done. Knowing your purpose motivates your life. Folks, don't care how discouraged you get. Don't care how bright I is sometimes. I'm broken. There's never a time. You question God as to whether you think you step out and maybe God is step out and you just, you, just, you just decided to humor me. But God don't work so. But I always stay focused on my purpose. You see, before, because folks, if you don't stay focused on your purpose, and you're seeking to do things because you want people to like you, when they don't like you, you're going to run from purpose. You with me? When you're flowing in purpose, and then certain stresses start to come against you, if you are not flowing in that and know what that purpose is, you're going to run all the time. Or even if you're running, you know what you can do? You can start to operate at another level because the people intimidating me now. So all of a sudden, I can't go and talk now. Because every time I talk, man, let me tell you something. Yeah, I cut out my tongue. Because my purpose is about bigging up Jesus, full stop. Every message, I ain't going to bore this song to you until you get that revelation. When God released me then and said, listen, let me go to something here. Let me talk about end times. I ain't carrying you and teach you about end times until you know your only hope. None other than Jesus. And it is all about purpose. Knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. Many people invest their entire lives building up a legacy on this earth. I, I saw, um, and, and you, that's part of purpose, so don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't say don't build up a legacy, because I, I, was, I was viewing the funeral there of, um, of Mr. Young, who a black businessman was able to, to turn around, I mean, for, to our benefit, turn around whole supermarket business was sounding about here when they're killing me with the prices. I used to work at Birds at the time. I remember one year he said to me, listen, I want you to bring all your cheap paint, bring it up here. I want, give me a price, I give you the price, I'm going to sell it at a dollar profit. It was a paint in a round so I could call it. Call Magic Court. I'm going to know you cheap paint, but he said, hold on, pay what? At least for a year. And Mr. Young said, listen, I want you, if the first supermarket in Barbados, I talk about purpose, right? That's what? Magic court. Roll. I say, I say young. Because it used to be young. Um, he never wrote young. Um, when, when I got the history, my young street store. I know he talking about from Bats Road. Yeah, yeah. It used to be. Then they, they got me, but yeah, never roll. And just to show you, I talk about purpose. And he didn't. In fact, he might have been a Christian leader, but not that time. And listen, he told us, we connected with him. He said, listen, bring the, bring, don't even put it in a box. Bring the truck with five top and put them all over the store strategically. You know what the man do? He used it as a loss leader to bring people to there go and buy the big bottle of brandy for four hundred dollars. Because everybody at Christmas want paint, and that man full up Bridge Street. And take my met with listen. I, I, my, my bonus didn't look. My, I did look good that Christmas. <laughs> all we do, all we were doing was making paint for Julian. Got any other stories here? And he, all he did, the master's bar, the master, if I sell 5,000, if I sell none, it's nothing. If I sell 5,000 at a dollar, I still got $5,000. That I can pay at least like, I two of the people that are putting out the paint. You see what I'm saying? I'm thinking? That is what purpose does. You're able to influence. You just want to go along and get to heaven. That way, well, even when Paul was at death door, he was still ministering. I, I can bring this thing to a close call. I want to know, I can see when I say, Pastor, we got your man. Let me go home and get some food. That's what I'm saying. So I can bring it home. Many people invest their entire lives building up a legacy on earth. They want to be remembered when they are gone. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But a wiser use of time, I believe, is to build an eternal legacy for us. Do your best. If you're a manager, manage good. You got one up, run your business 100%. Got children, leave a legacy. But work on that eternal legacy too. 
or with more fire. We are not put on earth to be remembered, but to be prepared for eternity. As believers in Christ, we must follow, we must run, and we must press after perfection. The perfection, here's how important it is, the perfection for which Christ has saved us. The believer must be active in living for Jesus Christ. We call it at this church, being committed to Christ, fulfilling purpose. Proverbs 19, 21 in the NIV says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. The NLT puts it this way. You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verses 13 and 14. I close with this scripture and I done. These scriptures, two more. Now all has been heard or well, that's the whole story. Take my version here a little bit. Oh, do I got oh, I didn't have NLT, but I'll use that. That's the whole story. Here's now my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commandments for this is everyone's 14. God will judge us. I tell you this one a couple of times. God will judge us for everything, not something. Now you modify things to, to make yourself more comfortable. He can judge you on that. God will judge you for everything we do, us, including every secret thing. I mark here where a lot of people talk things in secret and all the turn and not everything. Here it is, you know. Don't, don't mind you still got salvation. Don't mind you ask for forgiveness. Here it is. The judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing. Read a good. Or bad. Then I can air to secret thing. Be good here. You can give me shame before the Lord. I close with these words of Paul. And as I, as I say these words, I put here with a passion as if they were my own sentiments. When I was reading these words, I said, Lord, I, I want to say this. I, I'm, 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 I'm repeating Paul's words, but I pray that the people that you have given me to lead would hear my heart in these words. I would not misunderstand my passion. I speak these words now as if they were mine. So Paul, I beg you to lend me them. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 5 in the NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, dear parishioners, I plead with you this morning as your spiritual leader to give your bodies to God. Why? Because all he has done for you don't serve me. Don't even serve quote unquote your church. Do it because of what God has done for you. Let them I pray today that God will allow us to be a living and holy, living and holy sacrifices. The kind that he will find acceptable. But everybody got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. For, Lord, for folks, hear me. This is truly the way to worship God. Don't copy, please, parishioners. The behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Even if you think you're thinking right. I put it in brackets here. If you think you're thinking right, still be honest enough to go to God and say, God, search me and help me to know if there be any wicked way in me. Let me God transform you and I into a new person by changing how we think. Because once we do that, believers in Christ, then we will learn to know God's will. You will know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let us pray. How many of you this morning have heard? 
And even although you're not bad, you may be getting a good pass of 70, 80%. But you know that you need to do better. As you sit there, if you're honest with God, not with me, I'm not your judge here, please. You can sit down and you can see God's goodness in your life, in your family. Even though you got a million dollars, no way God has been faithful and God has kept you. But when you examine your life, you are not giving back to God like you truly appreciate. You're not giving back to God and flowing in purpose because uh, you're seeking to earn salvation. But you're saying, God, I'm motivated to press. I'm motivated to run. I'm motivated to follow. I'm, I'm motivated to commit myself. I'm motivated, God, to walk the way you want me to walk and talk what you want me to talk. Because I truly appreciate what you have done for me through Jesus Christ. Folks, if you're here this morning and you can do better, I want you to stand. I want to pray with you and me. If you honestly can do better, 5% better, 2.5% better, I want you to stand this morning. And I want you to close your heart with the Lord. I want you to close your mind. Don't be distracted. That's what God has said to me. Because a lot of times, you have the talk. You may be one of the greatest encouragers for Jesus Christ. And that's good. That's good that you're able to minister to somebody. That's good that you're able to lay your hands on somebody and minister to them. All right. That's good. Like me, they can come and, 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 and preach a, hopefully a good message. But folks, when you move from that position of ministry, are you ministering to God? Are you giving God your utmost best? I'm thankful for all you are standing today, and I want you to start to tell God what it is. I want you to open your mouth. I'm going to pray together right now. But I want you to tell God, God, use me. Lord, take me. Lord, whatever I got to change, open up my understanding. Come on. Talk to God for yourself. You go holler for the boy to know. Father, he's sinning, lost in. I got to tell you that. But you know what it is. You know that you can do better. I know the children got your strength. I know work hard. No, there's the one every time. You want your pound of flesh. I know. But that is no reason to put God second, folks. I want you all to know I love the Lord. And it's because of God's love that I love you people. I have been doing this for 22 years, and I am not, I'm tired sometimes of how people respond to God. I'm, I'm upset. Sometimes I watch us as we worship and I say to myself, God, are these people just doing it because I tell them to lift their hands? Why aren't people listen, lift, lifting their hands before us having to tell them, Lord? Lord, why, why are people not crying? Why are not people prostrating themselves, Lord? And they're doing it for sure, but Lord, are they afraid? Are they the fear we ain't going to allow it in church? No, we allow it. Father, come, we can't get a service where we can't get a chance to preach because God, people are so into you. Folks, it is because we are not doing it at home. It is because we are not doing it every day. I ain't judging nobody. It's got my weaknesses, but we got to press in. But if you're doing it every day, but you're doing it five days in the week, oh, Lord, that's a good improvement. All right, see anybody in prayer, and I guess when I'm praying, when I'm, I, I'm going to pray for everybody. And I pray for us together. Father, this morning, as everybody has stood here, we are not standing here in no condemnation. We are not standing here as no weak vessels. But, Father, we are standing here acknowledging that we can do better. Father, we are standing here acknowledging that, yes, the things of this world, we have made up certain little rules in our lives. Oh, I ain't going to get church. I ain't going to get every Wednesday. I ain't got to tell for my family. I ain't doing, I home doing nothing. Who am wasting time laying down while sleeping all the time? And I believe sometimes oversleeping, not that sleep, sleep is important, but oversleeping or too much sleep is a hindrance. And so, Father, I pray just as Paul gave up everything for Christ, I pray that we would be a people that we're not free, that we can't give up anything for you. Whether it be sleep, whether it's to come and spend two or three hours encouraging one another in the Lord. Lord, I pray that you will grant us a desire to experience Christ and the power of his resurrection. Holy Spirit, help us to know what it means to suffer with Christ. We say in our declaration, Father, to share spiritually in his death, we know we can got trouble and eventually be resurrected from the dead. Father, there are many of us here can testify we have not died physically, but God, we have been resurrected because we don't sin no more. God, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So Father, I 
pray that you will give us a desire to keep pursuing you, God, so that we can become the Christ-dominated persons for which you, God, originally pursued us. Help us, Father, to focus our entire energies, not sum up the ones we want, pick out, but God, our entire energies on this one thing, to daily forget our past accomplishments and failures and look forward to what lies ahead. I declare today that that is what will happen from today. This will be a new beginning. That all the mistakes, what we do a minute before we come in here, it's a past that we leave it behind and press forward. Whatever comes to what lies ahead. God help us to follow the example of Paul and learn from the pattern he set for all believers. May we seek to build an eternal legacy instead of an earthly one. Heavenly Father, help us to become living and holy sacrifices. The kind that you will find acceptable. Help us, Lord, to follow, to run, and press after perfection. The perfection for which Christ has saved us. And help us to be active in living, committed to Christ, fulfilling purpose. We thank you for your blessing. And Father, I declare over these people today that they will never be the same today. They can get it all right, right now. But I declare today is going to be a watershed day. I declare today that those who are finding it difficult to, to read the word will start to read. Who are fe- finding it difficult to pray, God will talk to you in the car, in the bar, from wherever they are. That's what prayer is all about. And Father, I'm declaring over our church, we shall start to see a change that will not only affect us as a family here, but will flow over into everywhere we go as individuals and as a church to see people come to know you as Lord and Savior. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Is there anybody here? Let me see this for a couple of seconds. Is there anybody here today who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Maybe you've been thinking about doing it. You have been afraid and all of that. Listen, God didn't give you no spirit of fear. If you are here, and let me tell you why we do it publicly. See, you can do a confession and maybe do it in a corner and something the devil can use that and say, you're already saved. But when you're able to stand up in front of people, you then know you're serious about God. If you're here today, you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm not even going to ask you to lift your hand. I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you don't want to come up here, I'll lead you to Jesus right where you are. So if you're here today, you're going to come by me to do the prayer. If you're here today, you do not know him as Lord and Savior, say to me, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you stand right where you are? I will lead you with Jesus. Saints, start the prayer. Start the prayer. Maybe you were a Christian before, and you're in a sitting condition, and you need to recommit your life to the Lord. Would you stand this morning? Father God, we pray for those who are sitting that need you today. Pray that there will be a spirit of boldness. Shout out to you too. Is there another person? Is there anybody else? I don't care how young you are or how old you are. If you are here and you're saying, Pastor, go long, no, go long. Not ready yet. We know what we got put down. We know what's put down for us. We are not asking you to join the church. But we are asking you to acknowledge the creator of the heavens and the earth. Is there anybody else here who will say to me, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus? Would you stand right where you are and I'll pray with you. Is there anybody? There's a certain... And he is so young now, but a certain young man, and I pray God I'm doing the right thing, but I flow with the Spirit. Feels very strongly in his heart that as we want to do, and I don't know what it is that is holding, but sir, I'm not going to look in your direction, but because of my love for you all these years, I'm going to ask you today, because I know it in your heart, to forget everything else and give God an opportunity in your life. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds, 60 seconds to get up. Start a prayer church. There's no embarrassment. There's no shame. Because you're moving into eternity. Pastor Kathy, because I know, I know it's in his heart. Come. I want you to know. Go 
folks, I want you to pray for truth. Because I know in the person's heart, right? And but sometimes the enemy just tries to avoid us. Can I say dependent upon you and <laughs> Kathy? We can do it right there. Here's my heart, right? I, I can't continue. He has spoken to me, but I believe that it is something that needs to be broken over his life. So as we do these things, that we can put ourselves in trouble. Ask Kathy, brother, there. Now, folks, don't think that we have forced him into this. The reason I do it this way is because, it's so emotional, and because he spoke to me. But there's something about doing it publicly. Because you know, you could, you could, I could have led him to Jesus last week. But I tell him, listen, I don't want to do it, so you got to know and value it for yourself. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. And I'm telling you, right? You are the first that can work with the rest. I tell you, this time, brother here. You see the rest? I tell you, fear. Right? Because of this, right? The whole family. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Look, then imagine in this prayer, this is only about Jesus. Right? It's about joining the church. It's about Jesus and eternity. You say this prayer, believing God will save you, sir. Right? And about joining the church. You, know I mean? you want to go to uh, St. George, uh, you go to some other church tomorrow, no problem. You want something to tell you here? Say it with me. Say, Father, I come to you today recognizing that I am a sinner. I also recognize that I need forgiveness of sin. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sin. And with that same faith that I'm asking, I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. Father, I pray for these two men and I pray that, Lord, they will not go by their feelings. They may not go by what nobody says. But, Father, they will be redeemed right here by the blood of the Lamb. Father, their names are now written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray that your former heads of protection around them so that the enemy would not be able to make them feel that they are saved. Because, Lord, they are redeemed by your blood. So we thank you for doing it. For those of you who would have done it, say the prayer first of us, but we also pray for you, and we pray that God's will be done in your life. Find a good Bible preaching church and become a part of it so that you get to know the God that you serve more. If you see the information on Facebook from us, um, we have a free new conference course. We send it to you free. We even attach an ambassador or not. We we'll send them through the email, but we'll get them to call you and to take you through the material. That's how serious we are about receiving Christ. Has nothing, no obligation to us, no money, not even to join us as a church. If you do, we'll be happy. But that is what we do for you, so you get to know Jesus better. So at this time, we want to thank all of you who joined us for Facebook, Don't Move, Facebook, and um, YouTube. We want to thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you, and may you experience God's peace. Shalom. Put your hands together as we go out with praise. <laughs>